Welcome to Memphis. In this video, we're going to look at strong acid, strong base titration curves. A titration is something that you would do in the chemistry lab if you're trying to find an unknown concentration of something, such as an acid, a base, uh, or some other chemical. We're going to look at sodium hydroxide added to HCl, the, a common strong acid and strong base. So let's start by writing out the equation for the neutralization of hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. I'm going to write out the um, acid and base ions in blue and red, and the spectator ions in black so we can really look at the ions that are affecting the pH here. So if we add sodium hydroxide to hydrochloric acid, we know it's going to produce water, hydrogen hydroxide, plus sodium chloride. The sodium chloride, sodium being the uh, conjugate acid of a strong base and chloride being the, the conjugate base of a strong acid, those won't affect the pH. Um, so let's start out with our graph. Um, on the left for the titration curve, we're going to draw the pH and we'll number that from 0 all the way up to 14. On the bottom, we're going to label the volume of sodium hydroxide added. And as we add more sodium hydroxide, our pH is going to increase. Um, and it turns out that the graph actually looks like this. It sort of makes an S-shaped curve. We start with a really low pH, hydrochloric acid being very acidic. And as we add sodium hydroxide, you notice the pH increases, but it increases slowly at first. The reason for that is we're looking at a logarithmic scale. We're looking at pH. And every time the pH changes by one, that means we have a tenth of the hydrogen ions that we had originally. So you can imagine that when we've got a whole lot of hydrogen ions, it takes a lot of sodium hydroxide in order to get that pH to change by one. But as soon as we get that pH change of one, it only takes a tenth of the amount of sodium hydroxide to get that pH to change by another value of one. And then from there, it only takes a tenth of that amount to get the pH to change by one again. And so you end up getting this really steep part of the graph right here. And then it starts to level off as you add more and more sodium hydroxide. There's one really important part of this titration curve that we need to look at. And that's what's called the equivalence point. For a strong acid and a strong base, that equivalence point is actually going to be at a pH of 7. If you're using a weak acid or a weak base, that equivalence point will not be at 7. It will depend on what the pKa value is for that weak acid or weak base. But for now, we're just going to look at strong acid and strong base. The equivalence point is a special point where the amount of base added is equivalent to the amount of acid that we started with. And so I'm going to write that out. The moles of hydroxide added from our strong base is going to be equal to the initial number of moles of hydrogen ions that we started with, which comes from our um, hydrochloric acid concentration. So the moles of hydroxide is going to be equal to the initial moles of hydrogen ions that were added. Now whenever you do a titration, um, you're going to use an apparatus that looks like this. It's going to be what's called a burette, and it's going to be this long glass um, sort of funnel with a valve at the bottom. And then you're going to have an Erlenmeyer flask or some other beaker that's going to be filled with the acid. Now it's not just going to have the acid in it. It's also going to have an indicator. An indicator is a special molecule that's going to change colors at a certain pH. The most common one for this um, type of titration would be phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein will change color from clear to pink at a pH of about 8.3. If we look back at our graph here, we'll see that um, our equivalence point actually has a pH of 7, but if we go up to where it would have a pH of 8.3, it would be a right, right about here. If you notice, the amount of sodium hydroxide added to get to a pH of 7 is pretty much the same as the amount of sodium hydroxide added to get up to a pH of 8.3. And so we can use phenolphthalein as our indicator. We can really use any indicator that's got a pH um, or an endpoint of about, you know, maybe four up to about eight, nine, ten or so, um, because that's going to fall into this range right here where the amount of sodium hydroxide added is pretty much the same.
what we're going to do is we're going to add sodium hydroxide a drop at a time. And as we do so, we'll see the volume of sodium hydroxide start to decrease. The burette is going to be labeled 0, 5, 10, and so on, um, volumes of milliliters. And as we add the sodium hydroxide, we'll be able to measure the volume of sodium hydroxide that was added just by taking whatever our end volume is minus what our starting volume is. How do you know whenever you've ended? Well, the, the, the acid with the phenolphthalein in it will change color. It'll become sort of a light pink color. And that's when we know we've reached the equivalence point. We now know that we've added the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide as the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that we started with. And that would be our equivalence point. Another thing that you need to know is going to be what ions are present in solution at different points along the titration. So we'll start with at the very beginning where we just have hydrochloric acid. And so we're just going to have hydrogen ions and chloride ions in the solution. So I drew my hydrogen ions here. I'm going to draw chloride ions there. And keeping up with the color scheme I started with, I'm going to have hydrogen ions in red, chloride ions uh, just in white, and then when we get to hydroxide ions, those will be in blue. That's the point A. We just have hydrogen ions and chloride ions in solution. As we add sodium hydroxide, we're going to get into this next range I labeled B. We've still got the chloride ions. They're just spectators. Nothing's going to happen to those. And we still are going to have some hydrogen ions in solution. But every ion of hydroxide that we add is going to neutralize one of those hydrogen ions. We'll also have some sodium ions from the sodium hydroxide. But again, that's just going to be a spectator. It's not going to do anything. So I drew a sodium ion there. Now we're missing one of the hydrogen ions that I started with in my picture. Um, what happened to it? Well, like I said, as we added hydroxide ions, those are going to neutralize some of the hydrogen ions, producing water molecules. And in my particulate diagrams here, I'm just not including the water molecules, the solvent in this case. As we keep adding um, sodium hydroxide, eventually we get to the equivalence point, which I labeled C right here. And so what do we have at that point? Well, we've added the same number of moles of hydroxide as the number of moles of hydrogen ions. All of the hydroxide will have neutralized the hydrogen ions. So what are we left with? Well, we'll just have chloride ions and sodium ions in solution. Now, technically, we will have a very small amount of hydroxides and a very small amount of hydrogen ions. In fact, we're going to have exactly 10 to the negative 7th hydrogen ions and 10 to the negative 7th molar hydroxide ions. But that's just the auto-ionization of water. In any water solution at a neutral pH of 7, you're going to have 10 to the negative 7th molar of the hydrogen hydroxide ions. But in our particulate diagram, we'll just represent that as not having hydrogens or hydroxides. Finally, as we add more hydroxide to the solution, there's no more hydrogen ions to neutralize. And so in this fourth range here in what I labeled D, um, we still got the chlorides and we still have the sodiums. As we add more sodium and hydroxide, we're just going to have sodium and hydroxides in solution. And so you'll see here, we'll end up with a basic solution with um, an excess of hydroxide ions. Finally, let's take a look at the calculation you would need to make at the end of a titration in order to calculate the unknown concentration of hydrochloric acid that you were looking for. So let's say that we find this out. If it takes 45.32 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide to neutralize 25 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, what is the hydrochloric acid concentration? Where do we get these numbers from? First of all, the concentration of sodium hydroxide, that's going to have to be known at the beginning of the titration. You're going to use sodium hydroxide that you already know its concentration. Um, the 25 milliliters of HCl, that's going to be an amount that you measured out and put into that Erlenmeyer flask at the beginning. And then finally, the 45.32 milliliters here, that's going to be the, the difference between the final volume and the initial volume of sodium hydroxide that you added to the, the, the acid in order to neutralize it. So that's where all three of these numbers come from. How do we do this calculation to find that concentration? Well, we know that at the equivalence point, the number of moles of HCl that we started with is equal to 
the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we added. How do you find the number of moles? Well, you take the molarity in moles per liter times the volume, and that'll give you the number of moles. And so I have that written here, molarity of acid times volume of acid. That's going to be equal to the molarity of the base that we added times the volume of the base. In other words, moles of acid equal moles of base. Solving this equation for the molarity of acid, you'll get the molarity of acid equals the molarity of the base times volume of the base divided by volume of the acid. And if we plug in our numbers from the problem into that, we end up getting that the molarity of the acid is 0 0.18 molar. And I, I use three significant figures here. If you take a look back to the beginning, we had four sig figs in this, three sig figs in our concentration of sodium hydroxide that we knew, and three sig figs for measuring out the HCl. And so our answer is just going to have the least number, which was three. And so we can write the concentration of hydrochloric acid is 0 0.181 molar. And that's how we do a titration in order to find the concentration of, a, of an acid that we don't know.